Hiroja Sharp here and uh, on this video of Hiroja Sock Bubble I'm going to talk about kind of naming the different denominations that Bitcoin has and we'll talk about why that is important so we have Satoshi Nakamoto over here the creator of Bitcoin he named it Bitcoin and he's actually already a denomination of Bitcoin is named in his honor and I want to talk about it because it's important which will be part of the uh, second video I do on this part of this series, which is about trying to make a short, maybe a five part series about the future of Bitcoin and uh, money and defining some terms here. So we have this concept of a unit of account, which is part of what defines and what makes um, money. We'll get into that definition, but it's important for the unit of, attack of account that you have the dominations, the value of what you have for your monetary system to be able to be broken up into terms that people can understand the value of what it is they hold in their hand. So you have BTC Bitcoin and you have already the existing denominations of dollars and cents. So you have the concept already out there in the world, which is, which will probably, you know, one of the few financial uh, terms that we will port over from the old monetary system, the designation of the different value units. That's basically what the dom denomination is, is the value units of Bitcoin, of the monetary system. So we have dollars, like fives, tens, twenties, hundreds, um, and then cents. And then when you get into, when you gather the hundreds, you have thousands, uh, 10,000, 100,000, and then a million, things of that nature. And you go down here in the cents is pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters. And yes, I'm using USD because USD, you know, I'm from the States, but USD is also the global current global currency. But with Bitcoin, you know, one unit equals one Bitcoin. So one whole unit of equals the designation of a Bitcoin is broken down into eight decimal points. Eight decimal points. But that's a little bit of a mistake. The current system that we use, the dollar and cents one, only has two decimal points. So there's a decimal point here, and then all the value is over this way. So you have nickels, dimes, quarters in this denomination here, and it's very small. So you have a penny, you have a nickel, you have a dime, and a quarter. And that will make it into a whole unit of a dollar. Now. Why this is important is because the way Bitcoin is done, one Bitcoin unit equal one Bitcoin, is broken into eight decimal points. So the value, the majority of the value of Bitcoin is here on this end. All these decimal points, a significant chunk of the value of Bitcoin, what you need to make, when people say stack up Satoshis, they're referring to this denomination down here, this one, and these seven zeros in front of it, that you stack these up to eventually create the big daddy that you want, that one whole Bitcoin. Now, just like the current monetary system of dollars and since the valuation, when you get to one Bitcoin, of course, you have significant value. You have two, five, tens. Now, there is some naming of that, and I think that will change. But for now, for the sole purpose of adoption and making this very simple, we're just going to say, like, if you have 10 Bitcoin, 100 Bitcoin, 1,000 Bitcoin, people are still using that dollar cent uh, denomination when they're talking about Bitcoin. I think that will change. And there is some labeling that people do, like a mega Bitcoin. Um, I think it's kind of a little silly. Uh, I think that will change eventually when you have like, what does a hundred Bitcoin, what that is it, you know, are you going to refer to as a hundred? Are you going to refer to, um, I don't know, uh, a Nakamoto, you know, you have a, a Nakamoto of Bitcoin, you know, 100 Nakamotos or 100 Nakamoto Bitcoin, 200 Nakamoto Bitcoin. Something of that nature. I think I think that will change because people are going to change in their thinking of 
the way Bitcoin is. And we'll talk more about that in my second video when we talk about what money is. But the first purpose of the video, when we're talking about adoption, when we're talking about how we get people on board, we kind of need to start labeling things in terms of ease of usage that people can understand. So we have eight decimal points. And only one, two are actually properly in this right here are labeled. So this the eighth place, the seventh place, and the sixth place right here is something that is properly labeled, if you will. Everything else, they do have terms, but they're they're silly terms. They really are. They're not ease of usage terms. So I've actually come up with some terms that I think would be easy for people to understand or labeling or knowing what the value of their Bitcoin is. Or I should say the lower end when they're trying to stack up their Bitcoin into something. So BTC already has some de designations here. So one unit of a Bitcoin is designated Bitcoin. That's what it is. And then you have the breakdowns, the denominations. So 0 0.1 equals, it's named something, it's silly. This one you hear often, 0 0.1 is bit sent. And that is silly in itself. And then 0 0.101 is millibits and down, down, down. Then you hear something that's often talked about, which is 0 0.000. So you have the four, five zeros before this one, and that's where you get the bits destination. And then you have six zeros in front of the one where you get the finny. Uh, finny is named after how? Finny. Bits is derivative, of course, of Bitcoin. And then you have the one that's referred to often, which is the... Um, lowest denomination, the lowest breakdown of value you can of your Bitcoin was this Satoshi, which is named after Satoshi Nakamoto. Now, there has been talk as the value of Bitcoin increases that there might be a change, and this might actually end up being a hard fork of moving the decimal point down further to even up to as high as 20 places, I start her talk, or maybe as far as 10 to keep things simple. But right now we're at the eighth decimal point. Now you do see some people refer to a milli Satoshi where, you know, where the dice roll places and the gaming places and the faucets. Uh, I've looked into it and I'm not really sure how it is that they're able to do that. But you you will see something like a milli Lilla Satoshi. And that is like a ninth place designation of Satoshi, but it's not, uh, I'm not going to confuse you on that. But this is the actual hard in the code known quantity, which is the eighth decimal point, which is one Satoshi. So when you hear people saying stacking up their Satoshi, they're talking about this right here, this denomination, this breakdown of stacking these up, increasing it from Finney to bits, all the way up to these other designations until you get to the one Bitcoin right here, which is the goal of everyone, is to own one Bitcoin at some point in life, or multiple Bitcoins. But to have that. So, mind you, this is just my thoughts on what we can consider labeling uh, these decimal point designations. So I thought we should name this decimal point, this designation, when you're here, Nash. Now, there's a reason I'm going to tell you who that is. But, for example, when you have one Nash, how easy that is to say than, say, something like a millibit or, or something like that. It's a concept, it's a name, it's a designation. It's, it's easier to go off the tongue, it's easier to understand, and you're not getting confused with Bitcoin or Satoshis or Finneys or Bits or anything like that. It's a, it completely centers it differently in your mindset, if you will, with the designation. So the reason why I said that is this individual here, oops, John Nash. Now, John Nash, you may have seen that movie with Russell Crowe, is a famous mathematician. He is known for the concept of ideal money. And we'll talk about ideal money um, in our third episode of this series. But his concept of monetary policy very much influenced Satoshi Nakamoto up here. It very much influenced the conception of Bitcoin and a number of people that came into this space. So I thought as an ode to him, since there's odes already being made within the designation spots on 
this Bitcoin chart that the first spot should go to Nash, who came up with the concept of ideal money in about really just about making ugh, you know good money, money that can fit the global world without any um, interference or smart money. Not smart money as investment money, but smart money in the technical logical sense. That will get rid of the bad money, which is fiat. You know, the dollars and cents is this global system of bad money. Now, this is a very complex concept. So when we talk about John Nash, when we talk about ideal money, I'll, I'll break it down. But you may have heard these terms of good money, bad money, and smart money. And these are terms, whether they're appropriate or not, are associated with the concept of uh, John Nash's ideal money. So I thought that this designation, this decimal point, if you will, should go to the man that brought forth the concept of using some mathematical principles to create a better economic system for the world, for the globe, for everyone to use. He was thinking in those terms back in the 50s and 60s when he came up with the concept of ideal money. So, zero point, the 0, point 0, that's where the one Bitcoin, point 1, this designation here, should refer to as a Nash. When you get like 9 Nashes or 10 Nashes, then you eventually will have one Bitcoin. So now we labeled our, our first decimal point destination a Nash, and the second point is going to be a, du a Dwork. Now that is named after this individual here, Cynthia Dwork. Cynthia Dwork is a co-author of the Proof of Work concept. The concept of mathematical principles upon which the cryptographic means of the blockchain, Bitcoin, and other cryptocurrencies that use SHA-256 and the proof of work concept that was embedded into Bitcoin. This concept here, she co-authored with another gentleman named, uh, we'll get into. And I thought that we should acknowledge her work. Because of her work, we're able to have this current monetary system that, you know, Satoshi Nakamoto, that guy up there, brought into Bitcoin. So I thought as an ode and acknowledgement of her work and the reason why Bitcoin comes to existence, we should designate one of these decimal, decimal points after her. And so using her last name, but though we could use Cynthia if you want, Dork. So Dork is the individual and she would be 0 0.01 would equal a Dork. So you get 10 Dorks that will equal into a Nash, one Nash, and then one, you get 10 Nashes that will equal to into a Bitcoin. So this is building up, you know, we're slowly climbing down the decimal point chain and labeling things to eventually that people can get up into understanding, you know, Bitcoin. So one door. So we have our BTC, right? So we have our destination. So one Bitcoin, our goal is to get one Bitcoin. So we have Nash, we have Dork, we have Zabo. Now Zabo, is Nick Zabo. Nick Zabo uh, is the one who authored the paper about smart contracts. I talked about him in um, the two-parter about uh, satellite world and who knew radio existed. He gave a speech at a conference about using uh, radio signals as a means of transmitting the blockchain and the development of that. I talked about all that, how that is a very more efficient and more uh, ease of usage and more um, decentralized and global than say satellites. Uh, I'll have a link in the show notes. You can, or actually I'll put a little right here as well as a link in the show notes to the episode. Uh, actually I'll put right here, I'll put the actual, his talk so you can watch it for yourself. So the third designation here, I gave an O to Zabo. Now Zabo, besides the smart contract concept and then the radio concept of the blockchain, was one of the first earlier developers of Bitcoin itself. He's a guy that this gentleman, or group, or female, came out and, and reached out to him, and said Nick Zabo started working, saying there's something here. 
So he worked on it um, very early on, along with Hal Feeney and Gavin Andreessen and a number of other very early developers very early on in the space. So an ode to him for his contributions to the Bitcoin community, to com computer in general, and his continuing contributions to the Bitcoin blockchain, I thought we should designate the third denomination to uh, Nick Szabo. Now, also, just a side note, some people think that Nick Szabo is actually Satoshi Nakamoto. There is no proof of that, but there's a lot of speculation because of the language of the white paper from the ideas and concepts that Satoshi Nakamoto utilized. And he, he is cited in um, as a source in the original white paper, um, an inspiration and talked about through Satoshi's sayings, if you will. Uh, Nick Szabo's name is mentioned quite often. So there's that. So here we are. We have our four designations. We have, you know, the one unit that we're all trying to get to the Bitcoin. Then point one, Nash. Point zero one is a dork. Point zero zero one is a Zabo. Or that guy. So we have our BTC, right? So we have our destination. So one Bitcoin, our goal is to get one Bitcoin. So we have Nash, we have dork, we have Zabo. Now Zabo is Nick Zabo. Nick Zabo, uh, is the one who authored the paper about smart contracts. I talked about him in um, the two-parter about uh, satellite world and who knew radio existed. He gave a speech at a conference about using uh, radio signals as a means of transmitting the blockchain and the development of that. I talked about all that, how that is a very more efficient and more uh, ease of usage and more um, decentralized and global than, say, satellites. Uh, I'll have a link in the show notes. You can, or actually, I'll put a little right here as well as a link in the show notes to that episode. Uh, actually, I'll put right here, I'll put the actual, his talk so you can watch it for yourself. So the third designation here, I gave an O to Zabo. Now, Zabo, besides the smart contract concept and then the radio concept of the blockchain, was one of the first earlier developers of Bitcoin itself. He's a guy that this gentleman or group or female came out and, and reached out to him and said Nick Zabo started working saying there's something here. So he worked on it um, very early on along with Hal Feeney and Gavin Andreessen and a number of other very early developers very early on in the space. So an ode to him for his contributions to the Bitcoin community to com computer in general in his continuing contributions to the Bitcoin blockchain, I thought we should designate the third denomination to uh, Nick Szabo. Now, also, just a side note, some people think that Nick Szabo is actually Satoshi Nakamoto. There's no proof of that, but there's a lot of speculation because of the language of the white paper from the ideas and concepts that Satoshi Nakamoto utilized. And he, he is cited in um, as a source in the original white paper, um, an inspiration and talked about through Satoshi's sayings, if you will. Uh, Nick Sabo's name is mentioned quite often. So there's that. So here we are. We have our four designations. We have, you know, the one unit that we're all trying to get to the Bitcoin. Then point one, Nash. Point zero one is a dork. Point zero zero one is a Zabo. Or that guy. So again, trying to get that one Bitcoin. So we have a Nash, a Dork, a Zabo. And then I thought I'd leave the fourth destination open for the simple fact that there might be somebody, a developer that I didn't think of or an important figure that helped bring about Bitcoin to existence and, or influence that could be put in the uh, spot here, the slot here as a destination for these denominations. So I put it up to you who do you think should be in the open spot here for the fourth denomination for Bitcoin of value how we can make it into words and terms that people can understand instead of millibits and bit cents and bit this bit that but something in a designation or terms that people can relate to names people can name relate to names more so than these mathematical destinations that we have here and we'll talk about it um, after we talk about John Nash, how we can get away from the, the decimal placement here. But for now, that is open. So fourth designation is open. 
Again, we're trying to stack up to Bitcoin. So our fifth denomination, our labeling here, is money. Money Noor. Money Noor partnered with Cynthia Dork, our third designator here. And he helped bring about proof of work, the concept of proof of work. He was a co-author of that particular paper. So one, two, three, four, the fifth denomination here, I, I designated money. It's kind of similar to money, so it might not stick. It might be Noor, but I thought the sounding of it is too much like Dork. So I went with Moni instead, but here we are. Moni, part of the proof of work concept paper that was published in the 90s, is instrumental for allowing the concept of Bitcoin to come into existence as well as other Bitcoins. I put the denomination signature here in the fifth decimal point because it's called Moni's. So you get 10 Moni's, gives you the open spot, 10 in the open spot, it gives you one Zabo, 10 Zabos give you 10 Dorks, 10 Dorks give you one Nash, 10 Nashes give you one Bitcoin. Okay, so the sixth decimal point here has already been labeled, is labeled as bits. I'm open to the change. I think it's too much of a derivative of Bitcoin. I think it might confuse people when it comes to adoption. But as of now, if you have, in this decimal point, you get 10 bits that gives you one money. 10 monies give you that open spot designation there. 10 open spots gives you one Zabo. 10 Zabos gives you one Dork. 10 Dorks give you one Nash. 10 Nashes give you one whole Bitcoin. So we're moving up the pyramid here, or moving down if you will. Depends on how you view things. So our next already designated location on the pyramid of eight decimal points is a Finney, named after Hal Finney, who was very instrumental in the launching of Bitcoin. He received the first Bitcoin for Satoshi Nakamoto. They communicated often, almost all the way up to prior to Satoshi Nakamoto leaving and Hal Finney dying. He's also often cited as being Satoshi Nakamoto, but again, there's no evidence of that, and much of that has been debunked. But at the seventh decimal, you get Finney. And when you get, again, when you get 10 Finneys, it gives you one bit. 10 bits gives you one money. 10 monies give you that open spot. 10 open spots gives you one Zabo. 10 Zabos gives you one Dork. One Dork. 10 Dorks gives you one Nash. 10 Nashes will get you one Bitcoin. And then we're at the final spot here. The name you often hear all the time, and that is Satoshi. Okay. No one knows who Satoshi Nakamoto is, as an ode to him very early on in the space. The last decimal point, the last denomination designation of the breakdown of Bitcoin was named Satoshi. And that's the thing that you hear often. People say they're stacking their Satoshi. Uh, other, you know, crypto coins are priced in Satoshis. You know, however many um, Satoshis you can get. So when you get, you know, say for example, you get, you know, 10 Satoshis will give you, you know, the one Feeny, one Feeny up to um, 10 Feenies gives you the bits, one bit. 10 bits gives you money. 10 monies gives you an open spot. 10 open spots gives you one Zabo. 10 Zabos gives you one Dork. 10 Dorks give you one Nash. 10 Nashes give you one Bitcoin. So we're going up the chain here. And basically what people are seeking to do with their Satoshis is moving up the decimal point until eventually they get to up here, top of the pyramid at one Bitcoin. Now I think it's very important because there's eight decimal points to designate these denominations these points early in the space while we can it helps with adopt adoption more importantly it helps people understand it and start thinking in terms of btc versus thinking in terms of fiat dollars and cents 
start thinking in BTC terms, BTC language, start looking at pricing things in BTC terms, start thinking of exchanging, um, again, the unit of account, which we will talk about in our next video when we talk about the properties of money, um, which is broken down in five parts. Thinking those terms, and one of the best ways to help that is trying to make Bitcoin itself more understandable, more adoptable, using terms that people can digest. Like, for example, this decimal point designation. Um, we'll talk about that um, after we talk about John Nash. We'll talk about how put it in a monetary symbol symbolism that people can understand. For now, we, we kind of have to designate these names. So we got Bitcoin, Big Daddy on top. 0.1 of a Bitcoin will equal, you know, a Nash designation. 0.01 Dwork. 0.001 Zabo. 0.001 Open. 0.0001 Money. And then 0.00001 Bit. 0.0001 Fini. And then Satoshi. 0.00001, the last eight decimal point of Satoshi. Okay, so just to... kind of wrap things up um the reason i brought this up the concept of this up is just you know with the price going up and so many people being new to the space and maybe not necessarily aware of the history or the unique attributes or they're just seeing it as a quick money investment cash in cash out type of a deal i thought if a ways to try to make it easier for people that want to be part of this space want to be part of this platform this new economic means that you know we need to start making terms much easier for people to digest less technical and more ui more uh common friendly layman layman terms friendly and so i just thought we start, should start naming the designations of the different decimal points within bitcoin of course you know this doesn't need to be adopted by anyone just just, just a, a thought if you will to put out there. Um, I do think that we need to kind of shift away from decimal designations into, you know, whole number designations that people are accustomed to, like the ones, tens, ten, twenties, hundreds, you know, designation of things. Uh, you see that with Satoshis a little bit. I uh, see that sometimes with bits, people price things out in bits or Satoshis, but um, kind of make it so that people can understand somewhat much better, have a broader understanding of the type of economic system that we're in. Um, so that's it. That's my wrap up. Um, the next episode is going to be about what money is. Uh, is you know, is uh, breaking down the five terms. The third is about John Nash's smart money, or not smart money, but ideal money. Um, the f it's going to be broken down in two parts. One is me reading like this eight-page um, speech, basically, that he had done, or paper, if you will, about the ideal of money. And then just kind of the second part would be just breaking down the terms and breaking down the paper. The fourth one is my ideas about, you know, trying to rearrange the denominations into things, like I said, into units that people can understand. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do for the fifth episode, but that, I think that would be my, you know, contribution into this space for the moment about how we can think differently about Bitcoin, about the economics of Bitcoin and about um, labeling and adoption and making things now digestible and easy for people to understand. So that's it. Those are my thoughts. Uh, thank you for listening. Um, like and subscribe, share, comment below and, you know, give me your idea of what that, you know, that open spot, that name Nominate a name in the comments below who you think should be um, in that designation. Um, until next time, to the moon. Okay.